Two high school students in Georgia have been suspended for posting images of crowded hallways at their school. Now, I'm going to get into this story. I'm also going to show you a Donald Trump clip of him talking about school reopenings and his position on that. And I'm also going to show you a data from another country that opened their schools when everything seemed fine. And then what happened? First, the story here from BuzzFeed News, a Georgia high school suspended two students for posting photos of crowded hallways. Now, here, let me show you. Here's one of the images. Um, this is from Paulding County, Georgia. If you look at this image closely, there's like three kids with masks. I see one here, one here, one here. Potentially, there's, you know, you, can't, you see the back of the head, so there's potentially more masks here. But um, clearly, this is just not a safe environment. And the teen gets suspended for exposing that. So this was uh, one of the teens, this 15-year-old Hannah Waters told BuzzFeed News she received a five-day out-of-school suspension for posting one photo and one video on Twitter. Here's another image. It's hard to tell if they're wearing, wearing masks, but you see they're all crowded together. She posted the above photo with the caption, Day 2 at North Paulding High School. It is just as bad. We were stopped because it was jammed. We are close enough to the point where I got pushed multiple, uh, multiple times to go to second block. This is not okay. Not to mention the 10% mask rate. So a 10% mask rate, uh, approximately, I guess, judging from uh, what the student sees there. But she clearly was exposing this for a reason, showing that the school is not doing enough and uh, also just exposing the fact that school should not be open right now in the middle of a pandemic. And I'll get to some data on that in, in a second. But... Apparently, she was told that she violated the student code of conduct. The policies I broke stated that I used my phone in the hallway without permission, used my phone for social media, and posting pictures of minors without consent. Really? Do you really think this high school suspends every single student for five days that uses their phone in the hallway and, and takes a photo? Now, look, I understand some of the worry around people's identities, which is why I would encourage f photos more like this where you can't really see their faces, but still gives you the idea of, of what's happening. But obviously the school suspended these teens because they didn't want the word getting out that this is the state of their high school right now. 10% mask rate, all crowded together, clearly unsafe conditions, clearly will help to spread the virus around. Even if these kids aren't directly impacted by it, they can easily spread it to to uh, their parents or, or other teachers. So this is simply not safe. And the school, I'm assuming, didn't want to be held accountable for that in case anything happens. So they're trying to crack down on any information getting out. So I am here to tell you that there is nothing wrong with posting photos like this. In fact, I encourage it. I think we should see what is going on right now in these high schools. And again, I understand the issues with, uh, you know, with... Uh, people's faces, fine. Post ones like this from behind, you can't see faces, but showing you what is going on in high schools. Now, let me uh, show you some data here. Again, I post all these links below the video under sources in the description box. This is the uh, daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people. This is the uh, rolling seven day average. So I have a couple of countries up here on purpose. First, you can see Australia, UK, Canada, their numbers are pretty low right now. They got it down. Australia is coming back up. Um, but for the most part, compared to where the U.S. is right now, uh, it's not even close. So the U.S. numbers right now appear to be coming down. I don't want to get too much into this, but there is some speculation that since the Trump White House took over the coronavirus data from the CDC a couple weeks ago at the exact point that this downtrend began to, uh, began to happen, that it's not certain that this downtrend is actually what it appears to be. But with that said, the numbers are still ridiculously high. Now, Israel's here because back in May, middle to late May, see the, the May 20th there on, on the graph. That's when they opened schools. Everything seemed fine. They opened schools back up. Look what happened. Massive spike in cases. Now, this doesn't mean that it necessarily impacted kids, but they absolutely carry the virus. 
this if you're talking about a way to 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 really spread the virus around get a ton of kids together in a school and then unleash them on the world on their parents on teachers on other adults on society and they can without having any symptoms so they're not a lot of them not wearing masks not realizing they're even they even have the virus spreading it to other people they get the virus this is the result and the u.s is opening schools when they're up at the top of the graph so is, again israel did it at the bottom of the graph in may the u.s is doing it when they're at the top of the graph how does this make any sense now let me play a clip here from president trump on fox and friends and his view on school reopenings what is your the, the latest on your view of how these schools should reopen my view is the school should open this thing's going away it will go away like things go away and my view is that schools should be open if you look at children children are almost and, and i would almost say definitely but almost immune from this disease all right <laughs> it'll go away like things go away no that's not how a deadly virus works now it can get to a point where so many people in the u.s have it or have had or have already had it that they develop an immunity and there's sort of a, a herd immunity to it but at that point how many more will be dead how many more will have lifelong health effects because of it this is the thing as well with the coronavirus. You can survive it. It's not just about the death rate. People are focusing way too much on the death rate. It's also about the long-term health effects that you get from it. So there are issues with, with fatigue, uh, issues with, with breathing. I mean, you look it up. I, I did a recent story on this. There are long-term health effects of the virus even if you survive it. So it's not simply about the death rate. And when it gets to opening schools again one of the the major ways to spread the virus around and of course many cases like this this from CNN health on july 31st a georgia sleepaway camps coronavirus outbreak is a warning for what could happen when schools reopen cdc says so a georgia camp uh opened had a bunch of kids there 260 kids got the virus 260. It was 76% of the people they tested got the virus. And you're telling me that kids at school are going to be fine? Really? And again, even if they are personally fine, it doesn't mean they can't get the virus and spread it around. Teens in three Michigan counties hit by COVID-19 outbreak and parties may be to blame. This was from August 5th. So if they're getting it at parties, why can't they get it at school? Florida son met friends against family's wishes. Now dad has COVID-19 fighting for his life. This story from July 17th. This, this again, is the real worry here. Because um, obviously, you look at all, all the data, for the most part, for the most part, with exceptions when it comes to kids that, that may have... Um, uh, uh, conditions already for the most part most people most kids most teens do not get deathly ill from COVID-19 now that isn't to say that there might not be long-term health effects there might be again we're in the middle of the pandemic we don't know what the long-term effects are going to be until we're, we're really out of this but for the most part the real worry is them spreading it to other people them unknowingly having it not having any symptoms and spreading it to their parents, spreading it to other adults. That's the worry here. One last story here to share from EcoWatch. Teens and tweens are fastest COVID-19 spreaders. New study finds. This is from a, a study out of South Korea. The large study found that older children, mainly teens and tweens, are more likely to spread the virus than young children or adults, as Bloomberg reported. That means that kids are going to high school and middle school are likely to pass the virus amongst each other and then bring it home, even if they do not have any symptoms. The findings suggest that as schools reopen, communities will start to see clusters of infections take root that include children of all ages, several experts told the New York Times. 
Yet, no, the real issue is kids in these schools exposing how dangerous these conditions are. It's unbelievable. It really is. And look, I understand the desire and the need for kids to go to school and be able to socialize and, 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 and develop mentally that way and, and be able to, you know, learn in, in a proper setting. But when you're in the middle of a pandemic, like if you want kids to go back to school, then actually do something to stop the spread of the virus. Mandate masks, give people real financial help so they're not out there trying to, you know, make money and, and live. Give people enough help that they can stay home and pay the bills. Look at other countries. Look at Canada. Two grand a month if you're impacted by the by the by uh, COVID nineteen. Other countries in Europe, they have whether whether it's a UBI or a wage subsidy, they are taking care. Again, none of these systems are perfect. I mean, as a Canadian, I have plenty of criticisms of the Canadian system, but it's still more than what Americans have received, and that is even not even including the fact that Americans aren't guaranteed health care. How insane is that? That there are so many people, so many Americans losing their jobs and many of them also losing their health care because of it. Because in the U.S., for some ridiculous reason, health care is tied to your employer. What a crazy system. So when you have a society built like this, designed to not help people, designed that everyone to, for everyone to just fend for themselves, this, this is the result. This is the result. So, look... Be safe out there. And when it when it goes to school, when it comes to schools. Look, I'm not your parent. And if you're if you're a kid watching this, I can't tell you what to do. Um, but it's important that your parents understand the risks. And if you're able to, my God, learn from home as much as possible. Just there has to be another way to deal with this. So be safe. Wear a mask as much as possible wherever you go. Wear a mask. Look, I wish I had something more positive to end on, but this is the world right now. You have people in charge that are completely insane, that really do not care. And uh, we just got to manage the best we can.